Okay. Well, I actually was going to start this session by asking um, if anyone has seen anything exciting lately in the Omaha region art-wise so we can share with each other or, ex or themselves showing work that they want us to go see. I will start. How about I start? Yeah. Bemis is having an opening on July 11th for our summer show just next Thursday, free and open to the public. Um, it's Inner Ear Vision. It's not a show that I curated, so you should come and critique it. Um, and it will be the whole exhibition space is taken up by one group show. We are also um, releasing a limited edition beer with Zipline called Low End, which is a pale ale at the event. So if you want to come, be super fun. All right, now that we've done the some talking, um, we're going to do some, some talking about artist talks. Um, and I know that I'm going to, I guess we can pass this around. Um, so our next um, WAW session is going to be in August, right after Open Studios, on the 7th, um, at the Union. And that's going to be you all signing up to do an artist talk. And they'll be short, 10 minutes or less. Um, and you'll be able to show slides. So you can sign up tonight. I think the sign up will probably be pretty much up until like a week before. So hopefully for people that are not here, they can also sign up. Um, and that'll just be a really fun evening at the union. So you'll be able to kind of take everything into consideration, what we talked about tonight, and put it into practice at the Union. And then you can put it on your CV that you give an artist talk at the Union Center for Contemporary Art in Omaha. So I think it's great. Um, great way to kind of do a little bit of, you know, sort of if it's your first time giving an artist talk, or even if it's your 100th time, hundredth time giving an artist talk, it's always good to practice. So that's going to be something we'll talk about a little bit here. Um, but sort of keep that in mind. I'll pass this around. Um, you could also think about it. You don't have to sign up tonight, but I would encourage you to do so. Oh yeah, pen. Pen might be good. Yes, please, please write legibly. Oh. Um, okay, so artist talks. What is an artist talk? Um, an artist talk is a great opportunity for an artist to talk in depth about their work. Um, talk about your process, your influences, um, past work, current work, what your future may hold. Um, basically you have a hopefully captive audience, right? You're hoping that your audience is actually paying attention to you. You can never really um, dictate that part of it, but at least you can dictate what you're saying. and and how you're saying it. Um, artist talks really, yeah, they can be sort of a variety of things. You can have a really standard artist talk where you stand up at a podium, you show images of your past work, your current work, images of research that you're doing, you know, shows that you've done, really kind of give a breadth of your practice. You could dive into something really particular, a particular show that you've done, the research around that, other artists that are, might be in it, um, you could do some sort of performance and make it a little bit more um, different. You can show videos. You know, there's, a, there's no right or wrong way um, to give an artist talk. I will, or the, the format, I will say. Um, and, you know, you're, luckily, people that are coming to this are interested in what you're wanting to say. They're knowing that you're giving it or that it's a group of people that are going to give artist talks the same way that we do at the Bemis with these sort of five minute talks, which I think are a really great way to sort of start. And this is, you know, the union will be 10, you know, under 10 minutes. So you can kind of keep that same format. Um, and that way you can kind of really um, focus on something very particular uh, if you want. If you're giving something longer, you know, 30 to 40 minute lecture, obviously you're going to be probably showing more images and things like that. Um, but kind of keeping it under that 10 minute mark 
you're able to really specify what you want to say, be really succinct in what you're saying, and also, you know, sort of have a beginning, middle, and end very quickly. Um, here we have, you know, sort of um, what I agree is like the most engaging talks, you'll have visual material. You want to see what people are actually talking about. You don't want to just be talking about, oh, you know, I, I did this piece and it was um, responding to the current political crisis and, you know, it had this and this and this. And it's like, well, can I see a picture of it? So make sure that, you know, you sort of have, you know, it goes back to our first session, really good documentation of your work because you want to be able to project it as large as possible so that people can see it and it's not pixelated. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, and I think that first, lecture um, that Peter probably sent out to people that were um, attended, you know, showed that sort of um, size ratio that you should have like web versus print. So thinking about that when you're putting together a slideshow um, and making sure, you know, if you can test it beforehand to make sure your images look good, what color background it should be on, all of these sort of things are important. I really am digging this blue background, but this is not necessarily a background that I would pick if I was giving uh, a lecture about an artist's work. It'd probably be probably be black with like images on top of it, just so it kind of pops a little bit more. Um, so yeah, kind of thinking about, you know, when you're putting it together, what I like to do, and this is just a personal thing, is um, get all of the images that you want to show. Like put them all in one folder, or even already just load them into a slideshow, and then edit from there. You know, it's sort of nice to kind of dump everything in there you know, if it's an overall shot, if it's a detail, however it is, um, just dump it all in, organize it in the way that you want, whether it's by chronology or by project or however um, you decide that it makes most sense. And then you can edit out of there. You might be like, oh, I have four images of this one project. I don't need to show four images, right? Um, these two are gonna do really well. This is an overall shot and this is a detail. And I'm gonna talk specifically about those two things while those images are up behind me. Um, so there's also a timing aspect that you kind of have to think about. Um, so that's sort of, you know, things to consider when you're giving um, an artist talk and what to include. Also, this is, we're like such a small group, and I always say this every week or month, but please ask questions or just throw your hand up or comments are also very much appreciated, so. Um, continuing the what should it include, uh, we have the beginning, the introduction, right? So you want to introduce yourself. Don't forget to say your name, even though maybe somebody has introduced you beforehand. It's just nice, um, you know, sort of where you're from, overarching concepts um, and influences within your work. Obviously, um, images of recent work is what people might want to see right off the bat, but it depends on how you decide to structure your artist talk. Every talk is going to be different depending on the situation that you're in. Um, like I said, you might be asked to talk specifically about one body of work or your practice overall. Um, so depending on what that, um, what you are sort of working on, you can kind of do that. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, if you have like video, you could start off with a video, right? You can show a quick clip of something and then delve into it and be like, hi, I'm this person and this is my work. Um, thinking of your talk as a story can be useful. Um, so sort of like, what is your story as an artist? Or what is the story of this particular body of work? And sort of being able to tell that. I actually have um, a kind of like participatory thing that we can kind of go through after this. Um, that sort of outlines all of this, but creating an outline for your artist talk, um, depending on how you want, what you want to be talking about. Uh, I think for the talks of the union, who's going to be interested in doing that? Raise a hand. A couple of you. Um, so if you think about it, you have 10 minutes. It's not very long. Um, or like Steve has five minutes or something like that for, at the Bemis talks, because we try to keep them short. What, how many slides can you show in that time? Timing it out, how much time can you have um, while talking about those slides? So there's um, the sort of that 
Pachukacha model of the like 20 slides in six minutes is kind of, a, I think, a really good model to use um, because that gives you about, I think, 20-ish seconds per slide. Uh, and obviously that can kind of be changing <clears throat> depending on what you're showing. You could do less slides, you could do more slides and talk more quickly, or you could just have slides going behind you and you don't have to be particularly talking about exactly what's on the stage but you, or on the screen, but you could have it just kind of be shuffling. Just depends on, again, like how you want to do it and what you're comfortable. If you want to sort of refer to each piece, then maybe you do that sort of 20 to 30 seconds per slide and sort of estimate what that timing would be. Or you could just have a slideshow going, or you could have sort of a silent video going that you could be kind of talking about. Um, just, again, kind of depends. But I think like when you're giving a, a talk that's between five and 10 minutes, that sort of 20 slides is a good amount to kind of be able to show that breadth of what you're working on or your practice or something or a specific project. Um, so kind of think about that as you're signing up for your talks and as you're sort of starting to pull this together, you know, like, but that might mean you need to start with like 40 images right and cut down from there you can also always do like a diptych right you can show an overall shot and a detail on one slide so kind of thinking about like tricks of the trade and like how you can show more you know when you apply for things how you can show more things by combining it on one actual screen but it might be two or three images um, <clears throat> the middle the body of the the talk this should really dive into the examples of like specific works or that or like specific references um, that kind of support like larger ideas of your practice. Um, things that you've sort of touched upon in your intro, like I'm Rachel, my curatorial work is really about the crossover between art and architecture and how artists are utilizing space. And then I go, this is how one artist did this that I curated. And this is how another show that I did you know, did these sort of, sort of giving those, you know, maybe those two or three like examples of those um, particular issues that your work uh, or your project are really trying to address. Um, but yeah, kind of keeping those images moving. So I think it does help if you can sort of set things on a timer. So that's what is so great about PowerPoint now, because you can time everything out in there. Uh, and you could practice it, you know, and you can kind of even hook it up to your television or to a projector or whatever you have access to. Or probably Andy will let you come in here and just do it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really helpful to, that is, I mean, I'm going to say it now, I'm going to keep saying it, like, if this is something that you're planning on wanting on giving on August 7th, start working on it tomorrow, you know. Pull those images together tomorrow, over the weekend, like put them together into a slideshow, you know, edit them for the next couple like of days and then start practicing what you're going to say. Um, I think I may have told this story in the first session, but I can't remember. I've told it like in so many other sessions, but I feel like it's so good where I met this artist once in Austin and he, um, he was so great at this like five minute pitch about his work or like I don't even think it was five minutes it might have been two minutes but you know he just sort of like he just said it so effortlessly that I was immediately impressed and then I was sitting with him or we were doing this kind of mock interview for another artist who was applying to grad school which is a great idea by the way mock interviews are really important uh, really helpful sort of similar like this and he said he just did you know he kind of wrote his speech his sort of little elevator talk got it to a point where he was really happy with it and just kind of memorized it in a way where he would just practice it daily. Like every morning when he was in the shower, every night before he went to bed, maybe in the middle of the day at some point when he was by himself. And so he just kind of got so used to, you know, and obviously it changed a little bit as his work changed and he just kind of kept evolving it. But he could just say it, like he didn't have to think. Um, and I think that, you know, the sort of practicing and this is something my mother used to make me do when I was like learning geography and spelling where I just like constantly like repeat myself and like write the same thing over and over and over again. Um, it really does help. It really does like sort of, you know, 
train your mind to kind of think about, um, be able to say things without, without really thinking about it, but obviously you're still thinking about it. So um, practice, practice, practice. I know this has nothing to do with the slide up here, just reminding you guys. Um, so yeah, the, the body of your artist um, talk should sort of delve into these maybe specific examples, again, depending on the timing, maybe two to three. Um, building um, the body of your talk with images and other visual information, so if that's a um, video or other sorts of things that you can kind of keep your, your talk kind of going forward and building upon itself. Um, and then, you know, this is where you can talk about like your process. Oh, I'm out of the frame. This is where you can talk about your process, you know, like how you're making the work, what, who your influences are, um, and sort of that kind of like supportive content um, that people are always going to be interested in. And you're priming people to ask questions afterwards, you know, like you're saying, oh, I was really influenced by this trip I took to Western Colorado where I learned about this one process of blah, 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 blah. I'm again making this up. But then somebody could ask you about that afterwards. They might write that down, like, oh, so where did you go on that trip? Like, who did you study with? Like, what did you learn? You know, like, and then that kind of creates conversation afterwards because that's what you really want. You don't want, honestly, I mean, and I've been there, like, you've given a talk and then you're just waiting for somebody to ask a question. You're like, are there any questions? Are there any comments? Should I keep talking? You know, so, you know, kind of prime people with giving them some information, but not obviously saying everything about it so that they can maybe, it might trigger something in their mind. Oh, I've, you know, I've been to that place too, and oh, I had this experience. And you can kind of, even if it's not a direct question afterwards, it might be a conversation starter. It might be the start of a long collaboration. Like, who knows, right? So just kind of being able to, to slip those things in. Um, kind of keeping your audience invested. Questions? Um, and then there's the conclusion. So obviously wrapping up your talk, final thoughts, um, and you know again kind of encouraging, being able to encourage questions, um, and sort of leaving a little bit of space and time for your um, listeners to sort of gather their thoughts, formulate what they might want to like comment on or ask. Um, so being able to kind of give a little bit of a pause is always good before you say, are there any questions? Um, leaving on like sort of a really strong image too that you can kind of keep up there so it doesn't turn black. That's also I think something really important is your timing. Um, your presentation, you want to sort of end on a great image that then you can just, that'll just stay up there as opposed to sometimes when you time these things, they go like right to black or to white or whatever and it's like ends, end of slideshow. Like you don't want to end on the end of slideshow. You want to sort of be in front of your last like kind of really strong image so that people can kind of refer to it. They might ask you, oh, can you go back to that image like two before this because I have a question about that, which then you can kind of like access that really easily. Um, so just sort of like thinking about that, like all of the sort of little PowerPoint slideshow tricks that um, I feel like PowerPoint is now at the point where it's pretty easy to navigate and learn that stuff and you know you can kind of get tutorials really easily. So um, just thinking about that. Um, but yeah, I mean, public speaking is not an easy thing to do. Um, so, you know, there's, there's sort of all of these steps, right, you want to take. You want to take that sort of practice step. You want to be able to really, like, practice um, by yourself. And then also, if you can, in front of an audience, maybe that's your dog. Maybe that's, you know, your partner or your kids or your friends or something beforehand. Um, and getting some feedback from them, too. You know, like, oh, did, you talked way too fast. I, I, your images were great, but I had no idea what you were saying, you know? So then it's like slowing down your timing, thinking about that. Um, I use my hands a lot when I talk, because I'm super Italian. <laughs> it's like I'm constantly going like this. My husband is constantly telling me, don't use your hands so much, but I can't help it. So it's like something that I like, I'm always conscious of and like really self-conscious of, and then I just sort of embrace it. Um, but I try sometimes to wear things with pockets so I could maybe put my hands or if you're at a podium you can like put your hands on the podium and so you don't have to 
like you kind of like grasp it so it kind of gives you grounding. It's really, you know, something to think about. Um, and the other thing is sort of, you know, your nerves, right? So like nerves come into this. It's really kind of scary to get up in front of an audience, no matter how many people are in the audience, and to talk about your work, which is something that you can be so self-conscious about to begin with. Um, so I took this public speaking um, kind of quick workshop at a conference one time. And the woman who was the teacher, I really like appreciated her. And I can't remember everything that she told me, but there were certain things that she did say. She said, wear something that squares your shoulders. So like a, a suit jacket or a, a blazer for women is like a really good thing. It kind of like squares your shoulders. It makes you feel really good about yourself. You're like, yeah, I like feel really good right now. I'm like wearing a blazer, I feel professional. So when I give a lecture, I always wear a blazer. Um, the other thing she said is that a couple minutes before you have to go on stage, go into the bathroom or go somewhere private and just like make yourself into this like giant person and hold that for like a minute. And then you'll like get out of that pose and you'll be like, yeah, I'm wearing my blazer, I feel big, I feel strong, I feel really good about myself. And I do that before any time when I'm feeling especially really nervous. And it's so helpful. So, yeah, like your body just like, yeah, like Superman pose or like, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, like loosen up, like stretch even, because you're going to be standing. I mean, even standing for the past like 20 minutes, like, you know, I get on concrete floors, especially. So, you know, there's certain things that you can do to make yourself feel like, bigger and better about yourself, looser, always have water, you know, like keep that with you so that you can kind of, you know, even though you're like, I only have 10 minutes and I have to speak about all of these things, like, well, you know what, that's okay. You can take a sip of water. It's, it's not going to take more than a few seconds to pause, let people look and like listen to what you just said. And so like, when you have your talk and you've written it out and whether it's in you know an entire like you want to read this talk but you want to be giving it so it's like sort of you're memorizing it but yet you still have your notes because you don't sometimes you forget right put water break put pause like put those in big letters like on your paper so that you know okay stop right now let people like look at what i'm showing on screen, think about what I just said, take a sip of water, and then continue. Um, and then that will just like allow people to like hear what you have to say. Because sometimes when you're talking, you're just talking, 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 talking. It's like, wait, what did she say? Um, and you know, sometimes that can work in your benefit because they might raise their hand and be like, can you go back to this part because I missed it? But you don't want to say that, you don't want your audience to say you missed it you want your audience to ask you a specific question about that thing. So being able to take that pause might give them a second to write down quickly, oh, ask about this. And then at the end, they can. And you can have a fruitful conversation. So um, tips for writing your artist talk. You are the authority on your work. Don't forget that. That's really important. It's your work. You've made it. You know why you're making it, or you at least hope you know why you're making it. Um, and so, you know, remember that, that that it's your work and that you're not presenting on somebody else's stuff, just like me half the time, and so that's really scary. Um, knowing your audience, I mean, that's, you know, that's hard, right? You, you're gonna go into different situations where you're not gonna know specifically your audience, but you might know the, the idea, the, the makeup. Um, if you're asked to give an artist talk, by somebody, ask them like, oh, well, who's typically your audience? You know, do they know a lot about art? Or are they, you know, just starting out? Or are they, you know, specifically interested in something that I can cater my talk to? Uh, using clear and direct language. I mean, we all sort of have come across that sort of art speak, art language, when you're reading or even, you know, listening to other people's artist talks, like it is so much more interesting to me to have an artist just speak to me about their work in very like plain language and show me great images than if I hear them trying to use all this like art world jargon. I mean, you can still say like, 
you know, I've been influenced by this movement, which, you know, and this is specifically why I was influenced by it. But you can say that in a way that everybody can understand it because you never know who's your audience as you don't want to alienate people. Um, avoid literal descriptions. You know, like you don't need to exactly tell me what is on screen because I'm looking at it. So, you know, you can say in this work, the concept was that I'm delving into this idea of portraiture and blah, 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 blah. But you don't have to say this red jacket and this person was, you know, like, we don't need literal descriptions. Somebody might ask you, oh, why did you use this in that painting or in this sculpture? And then you can kind of talk about that afterwards. Uh, but you don't need to be literally describing what's on the screen. Again, avoid language or crutches that undermine your, undermine your talk. Um, tips for delivering an artist talk. Number one, practice, practice, practice. Uh, number two, know your talking points. So, you know, sort of have those in your mind as you practice, like know exactly what you want to be saying. What do you want to say about your work? What do you want people to know about your work so that they can be more informed um, and ask you more informative questions? Number three is, should be number one. <laughs> Resolve technical issues beforehand. And I don't know how Peter's gonna ask for your slideshow, um, but for me, when I am given, I'm asked to go give a talk anywhere, I make a PowerPoint. I make a PDF of that PowerPoint. I have it on my like laptop. I usually have it on like also a flash drive. I have a connector just in case. You know, like you just, it's good to be prepared. Um, I put it on the cloud sometimes also. So if I need to just sign into something, I can do that. So, you know, there's, I know it's a lot, but overall that takes about maybe eight minutes to do. So it's kind of worth it. And that way you just have it. And, but make sure you update it if you're asked to give another one and you go in and you're like, oh, which talk is it? You don't want to like be scrolling through a bunch of stuff. So um, it's always good to kind of resolve technical issues beforehand, especially if there's video link or if you need to embed video. I don't even know how to embed video. I just do a link. I feel like that's important. Sure. What do you think keynote I don't, I just don't know keynote. Even though I have an Apple, I never use it. I just use PowerPoint. But I think it's, I think they're very similar. Um, but some pe what Keynote versus PowerPoint. I feel like more people have PowerPoint than Keynote. I will say that. It's, it's better to do Google Sheets. Mm. You can export Google Sheets. You can export that as Keynote. Well, I mean, Keynote or a PowerPoint. Uh, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's the Google platform, so it's like, Google has all these sort of free applications. Like they have like their own Word, Word, you know, they have their own Excel and they have their own like PowerPoint-esque thing. And then when you can, if you need to export it, it can be exported as a PowerPoint or as a PDF or, yeah. Um, but I think as long as you, PDF is really universal. So even if you make it in Power, in Keynote, you can save it as a PDF and then that should be fine. And you, if you have a link, you should be able to like still access that link within it. I just don't know about embedding video into, I think that's a little harder. Yeah. Yeah, but that, that should be able to like, you could be able to probably do everything and then save it as a PDF, yeah. Um, where were we? Oh, number four, prepare for questions. That's, that's also where it comes into the sort of practice thing. Um, what I've done before is actually write questions that I think maybe people will ask me, even if they're really basic, so that I know what those, like, at least I've prepared to answer some questions. Um, and also, if you're practicing in front of an audience, have them ask you a question at the end. Um, make sure that you can answer that question. And so that'll prepare you for even if you get some wackadoo question, you could at least think back to, okay, like, you know, I've practiced this, I've thought about, this is my work, I can answer this question. You don't feel so like, 
that sort of heart pounding, like, I don't know how to answer that. It's like, well, this is your work. You're the authority on your work. Don't forget that. Um, and then make yourself accessible. So, you know, you don't need to be like up on this like high ass podium, you know, <laughs> like talking down to people. Um, it's people want to talk to artists. They want to learn about what you're doing. They want access to you. So make yourself, um, make yourself that way. Ask, you know, you could, you could start your talk being like, you know, please think of questions. You know, I'm here if you want to ask me afterwards and not, and not in front of the audience, you know, sort of just give yourself that, um, that freedom to be accessible. You can also make sure to have your contact information on the last slide or on, you know, at the, e at the very end you can go to, or the very beginning I've done before, like had my Instagram handle and my contact information. Like here it is just in case you want it or if you're interested or if there's a way to, you know, um, depending on what the situation is so that people can contact you because I've actually gotten emails from people two weeks later after I've given a talk about something like oh, I've been thinking about this and I wanted, didn't realize I wanted to ask you this but how did this come about or whatever um, doesn't happen that often but it has happened so it's totally worth being able to be accessible to your audience um, and you never know where those relationships are gonna go right it's all about networking so hmm. this is a stormy week um, you guys are all going to get copies of the slideshow, um, but these are a few different artist talks, um, and I'm going to play Mary's. Uh, Mary Mattingly is this wonderful artist. I don't know if any of you met her. Um, she actually, she was a resident at Bemis. Oh, I can't remember. Um, she was also in a show that I curated. She's one of our board members now. She's wonderful, so I'm going to play her artist talk and it's it's actually more of like an interview kind of artist talk for her but I think it's really great so I thought I would it's only about eight minutes speaks about her work is really accessible and it's not like as overarching like again you know I mean this is this is different from obviously giving an artist talk in front of an audience it's more of sort of this interview thing that I was edited but just sort of to kind of give you an idea of being able to kind of just talk in front of an audience um, and just doing that in a way that is really easy to understand the goals of the project and like the work that she did before that led her into the newer work so sort of being able to kind of do that um, that movement from older to newer so that is that. Um, but yeah, I would, um, when they send this out, you know, I definitely like suggest watching all of these links if you have some time. I think the Theaster Gates one is the longest at like 16 minutes, but his, his TED talk about his work, so um, it's a good one. That is my last slide. I wanted to see if there's any questions or comments or thoughts or has anyone done an artist talk where they've been really proud of it and they want to share or scared and like, you know, any, anything. I kind of think it's like a good way to sort of workshop. And then I have this, um, this, which I think might make more sense for everyone to bring home, but this way you can kind of do an outline. So um, it'll kind of help you. I mean, obviously you don't have to follow this to a T. I did not bring enough and get some more. Oh yeah, we used to do those. And uh, I was first, uh, um, you know, I'm the clown, we saw I think practice is one of those things. I think it's 
you know, even if it's just being able to practice that intro, maybe it changes over time what you're actually talking about specifically, but at least you can do your two minutes of intro really well to kind of give everybody the overview, um, you know, and, and having that kind of nailed down. I think that is probably a good way to, to try to get away from that. And then obviously doing the power stuff. Serious. when you do a, a talk that is sort of, yeah, work in progress or being able to kind of share some research and some ideas, that could actually be really beneficial for you as an artist to kind of talk through what you're thinking about in a public setting. Um, both just like, oh, I said that. And I, you know, like be, being able to watch yourself afterwards and sort of take your, take your own notes um, but then also see how people are, are reacting to what you're saying and if they're like, oh, this sounds amazing or, you, you know, or, oh, have you met this person that could be really good for you to meet, you know. So I actually think it's really helpful and I think when you do something like that, it might be a combination of, yeah, some work in progress images, it might be some research images, it might be, you know, an influence that's gotten you to that point. So sort of organizing your talk in that way where you can why you're investigating this particular topic and how, what you're planning on doing and even showing plans could be interesting. Um, the potential audience for the union in August, I mean, I think that'll probably be like people like this in the room. Uh, I'm not exactly, yeah, it's gonna be friendly, I'm gonna say that. I don't, I'm sure it's open to the public, but I don't know what, you know, I don't work there, so I don't know what their general public will be. Um, and who would come, but I would say it'll be like, you know, the Working Artist Wednesday group and possibly some other people from the neighborhood, some constituents, so. Yeah. Yeah, it's a really good way to get investors and not just, I'm not saying like monetarily, but just people invested in like helping you finish your project or excited to see what it's going to be like when you finish it. And so um, I think, you know, um, when I'm sort of starting out on a curatorial process, I'm a lot of times when I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I'm excited about this idea and I'm going to present that. And then hopefully what comes from that presentation is maybe some new material or some new ideas that then can like help it be a stronger project to then when I finally present it, the people that were there in the beginning could maybe come back and see it in its final stages. Any? I mean, I, I really enjoy giving artist talks and I think when I initially started doing them, I was very But um, I, I really like using artist talks as a, as a way of, you kind of, you kind of touched on this, it's just a way of like rethinking your motivation for why you make your work. Mm -hmm. Really trying to articulate why you're making your work and what this like long, maybe messy line of thinking that goes into making your work, what that can look like. So I, I find it, you know, it's really fruitful because, like, like you said, you know, you're building an audience potentially, uh, you know, often a lot of opportunities to come out of the talk. But I, 
I tend to like not even try to think about that. Just try to think about like how do I want to get through myself thinking about my own work and trying to come to some sort of like more clear resolution. But yeah, and I I mean I do think you know, and it's a different situation than when you're maybe in a studio visit with a curator or a gallerist or even a fellow artist. An artist talk is gonna have more general public people. So again, like how you speak about your work to make yourself accessible, but also you wanna know, like you want your ideas to be accessible so that when you're not there, people understand what you're trying to say, right? So um, I think that it can help in that way too, is when you're, you know, when you're working on through a piece or a series or whatever it is, being able to give a talk about it and then go back to that talk and see like how you spoke about it to then maybe finish or or reevaluate how you're presenting your work can also be really beneficial. So there's sort of a cycle there. Um, so I'm pretty sure, I mean, we've taped every one of these sessions. I'm pretty sure the artist talks will be taped, so then those will be sent out so that you can actually watch yourself and see how you how you did and, and what you what you yeah if you want <laughs> yeah no I think I think it'll just be sent to the probably the people that participate um, but you know I mean you can do that yourself when you're practicing just you know use your phone or your computer or whatever and, and tape yourself and watch it and um, even if it's just to hear not to hear your own voice, because I know we all hear our own voice differently. We hate, how most people hate how we sound. Um, but just either the timing and how you're saying things, and if there's words that you're maybe stumbling upon or stumbling on, or just if you're, there's times when you're quieter, because maybe you're a little unsure about what you're talking about, you know, and really being able to, um, oh, okay. I'm, I am more sure about that. I don't know why I was so quiet when I said that or, you know. Or, or just focusing on, okay, this part needs to can add a little oomph to it or something, however it is. Or, oh, you know what, the, the way that my slides are put together, I need to shift some things around because it makes more sense if I talk about this project first. So. I would really agree with that. I really enjoy giving artists talks too. I mean, if you think about the ways you can approach um, public speaking, this has got everything good attached to it. I mean, the people in the audience are there because they want to learn more about you and what you're doing. Um, you get a chance to to tell people what what's making you excited about your art practice. Um, and yeah, it, public speaking is not the easiest thing in the world, but this has so many good things set up for you. Artist talks have so many good things set up for right there. And, it's a chance to get your energy across. Definitely. Yeah, and I, I asked a friend of mine who's a high school public teacher, the number one thing she would tell people that are um, giving talks, and she said that your audience would be easy. You know, and I try to remember that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, nobody wants you to fail. Yeah, they're there to, yeah, just like what we said, so. <laughs> The shower is good. Oh, I was going to make sure I'm doing something else. Um, yeah, obviously not when you're brushing your teeth. Kind of hard to give an artist talk when you're brushing your teeth. But driving is good, making breakfast, like all of those things. Um, it's true, when you're doing something else and having to actually talk, my husband's always like, you can't do two things at once. You think you can. And I'm like, I can. 
<laughs> and he's like, what did you just do? I'm like, I have no idea. So, um, but it is good practice. <laughs> Um, I will say when you do have a PowerPoint, and I can show you all, is they do this presenter mode now. You can see what slide is coming next. So if you're standing in front of your computer, that way, and then time you've done. So when you take that pause to take that sip of water, you can look, oh, I'm 10 minutes in already, or hopefully not 10 minutes in when you're taking a pause, but you know, I'm, I'm two minutes in, okay, great, I'm, I'm on track, you know? So that's, this is actually a really nice feature of PowerPoint, I think. I use it all the time. I think, I don't even know how to turn it off, actually. It just does it automatically on my computer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, so like this, this was like, whoever decided, oh my god, I keep forgetting what's coming next, I'm gonna invent this, genius. So. And on the other hand though, if something fails with your technology. Oh yeah. No, it is good, it is good of course, like the way that Bart said to, you know, like know your slides, know your images, have a good sense of like what's coming, but. Yeah, but that's why you check your media before. Wait, I'll say check, check your tech beforehand, but like, when I'm in the audience for these, the, the time I get stressed when, for the person is when they're checking. Like, knowledge the problem. So uh. like, if shit hits the fan, it's like, pause, like, hey, I'm going to like fix this real quick. So we can try to like barrel through. <laughs> and you're like, you're like, oh my god, what is Do you know what I mean? Like, you all see that, but like, I'm really, I like, on the door, someone's being annoying, or like it's on the phone, just like have your opponent, just like yep. calm it down, calm it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other thoughts or questions? Comments? More thunder? All right. Well, thank you all for coming on the eve of July 4th.